Hello everybody, this is UFC Wildcat. And I'm Powder Blue Bolts. And this week we're going to be talking about the New Era Pinstripe Bowl between the Syracuse Orange and the West Virginia Mountaineers. Yeah, this game played at Yankee Stadium in the Bronx. This is going to be an outside game. They were actually predicting snow for this game, so that might be a little bit of a change for some of these teams. Syracuse playing in a dome, so they're not used to weather conditions at all. But, uh, you know, <laughs> that might be a factor. But moving on, uh, we're going to talk about, I'm going to be talking about West Virginia. And uh, you've heard the hype. Everyone knows. Geno Smith, West Virginia. A lot of people thought they'd be playing for a BCS Bowl. They won five straight. But then they dropped five straight. Oh so, man! <laughs> finishing the year seven and five, a good, a decent year. Their first year in the Big Twelve, a pretty big upgrade if you ask me from the Big t- or Big East. Um, but when you have a quarterback who has forty touchdowns on the year, four thousand yards, and only six interceptions, and through his first six games, through zero interceptions. And I, I thought I read a stat that said he had more incompletions, or he had, yeah, he had. Um, Less, more incompletions than he had interceptions, which was zero. So no, 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 no. Oh wait, is that it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that that happened for a while, didn't it? Yeah, he had like only like ten incompletions or something. It was some something cra- crazy, something yeah. like what? No, you no, no it that? was he had as many incompletions as he had touchdown passes. That's oh, what that's what it, it was. was. Like, he had like oh 10, yeah. man, silly stuff. Something really. crazy. I mean, and Geno Smith. I mean. Everyone, you know, week five had him on their Heisman board, and he was going to, you know, be the Heisman winner, and people were talking about, people are still talking about him for the draft. <laughs> you were supposed to be the chosen one! Exactly. <laughs> but he kind of dropped, fell off the radar after the game at Texas Tech, and then subsequent loss at uh, versus Kansas State, then they have TCU at home, lose that game in double overtime, they lose at Oklahoma State, and they lose to Oklahoma at home by one point. So they dropped five straight out of the national title race, out of the Big Twelve race, and Dina Smith was out of the Heisman race. So it's you been a, it's been a very, very, <laughs> very flip flop year for the West Virginia Mountaineers. But that does not mean they're a bad team. I mean, when you have a quarterback that has those numbers and these two wide receivers, oh Stedman God. Bailey and Tavon Austin. I'm not even calling friggin' Tavon Austin a wide receiver. He's he just is a, a do he's a spe- he's an athlete. Let he's me, a specialist. Me, he does whatever he wants. Against Oklahoma. When they lost 50, 50 to 49, he had 344 rushing yards. Stupid. As a wide receiver. Stupid. And he also had like 80 yards receiving. If you need to watch, they, they have a highlight on there where he just makes the Oklahoma defense look silly. This guy is, wow. It, it, oh, my God. Yeah, and like you, any like spread offense or any type of like, you know, like what, what Virginia runs. They run like a pitchless spread. What Oklahoma State, um, I think they still run that at mm-hmm. Oklahoma State. But yeah, oh my god, if you have that, like, he can do anything. They love running the little wide receiver motion over, and they do a little touch pass to him, and he can take it for buku yards. Stupid stuff. Yeah, it's just crazy. I mean, having these two receivers, Stedman Bailey having 1,500 yards on the year, Tavion Austin having 1,200 yards on the year. If you had oh one god. of those guys on your team, please I would read, say... Please read the touchdowns for Stedman Bailey. 23 touchdowns oh for Stedman my Bailey god. and 12 for Tavion Austin. I mean, if you had one of those guys on the field, I would be scared. But they're both on the same field. If you let these receivers get behind you in coverage, they'll burn you all day long. And Geno Smith isn't afraid to do that. Because Just ask Baylor. They kind of have to do that because their defense forgets to get off the bus every single game. They fall asleep in the backfield. They're ranked 116th oh, in the nation out of 123 teams. When you have an offense that amazing and a defense that bad, they're just flip-flopped as far as talent. Yeah. I, I mean, I really think that the West Virginia offense and the defense say, hey, let's play a game. Like, that's how it was against Baylor. They're like, we're going to give up 63. You try and win offense. And offense said, okay, we'll we're putting it. up 70. We're doing it. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Baylor scoring 63, 63 points. If you would have told that to West Virginia before the game, they probably would have thought they were going to lose. But, I mean, it's just it's crazy. So now we're going to talk about the um, Syracuse offense. And I I like this offense. I really appreciate it. I mean, they had a rough start to the season. They lost by one to Northwestern. They, they played USC tight. But eventually, you know, they got crushed 42-29. They beat Stony Brook, la-di-da. But then they went to Minnesota, and they lost 17-10. Barely beat Pitt 14-13. And then after they went to Rutgers and lost 23-15, these guys stepped up and said, look, 
we've got to win, we've got to turn our shit around. And that's when they did going winning five of their last six, which is a really big feat. I'm re- I, it's really good for this team, and a lot of it set, circles around um, Ryan Nassib. This guy is a great quarterback. He has 3,600 yards passing on the season. He has 24 touchdowns. And man, does this kid, he's a really good offensive weapon. Like, wow, I'm really happy. Also has nine interceptions, which is unheard of. I mean, I, Syracuse wasn't on the map for a while. And, um, you know, I don't know where they're doing really well. They also have two really good wide receivers in Alec Lemon and Marcus Sales. Um, uh, Lemon has 1,000 yards receiving. Uh, Sales has 863 um, Lemon has seven touchdowns, but uh, Sales has eight. So, I mean, really, those are the two wide receivers who are going to be doing work for the Syracuse offense. But they also have a pretty decent running game with two halfbacks who pretty much uh, do the work. They got Jerome Smith, has 1,000 yards and three touchdowns. But their touchdown scorer looks like Prince Tyson Gully, who is 617 yards rushing, and he has seven touchdowns on the season. So... I don't know. I really like what this offense does. It's really balanced, and, you know, again, they're playing against a defense who has more holes than, like, my Swiss cheese had on my sandwich this morning. <laughs> like, I think this offense is going to do work. So what are the keys for West Virginia? West Virginia, if you're West Virginia, you know your offense is going to do well. You, you you know it. You know Smith is going to do what he's always done. He's going to just lead his receivers, and they're just going to have an amazing game through the air, and they're going to do work. If you're a defensive player, you have to play defense. Do you? I know it's a lot to ask because they haven't really played defense a lot this year. One of the worst defenses in the nation. But if you want to win against this Syracuse offense that can is very balanced and can run on you and pass on you, you have to bend but not break. Because if you, like we've seen in the Baylor game, you can allow 63 points, but your <laughs> offense has to just allow or just score one more touchdown. I mean, it's... It's going to be a very, very... I think it's going to be a close game because West Virginia's defense is just that bad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love this game. I love this game because it's, it's going to be, be offense, offense, points. offense. Oh, yeah. Syracuse doesn't really have a defense either. I mean, it's going to be a pretty good game to watch. And for me, I think Syracuse needs to, again, lean on Ryan Nassib. This kid needs to have another good game. He needs to do what he did against Louisville when they won 45-26. Louisville came up to Syracuse, and bam, 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 bam. They got smacked in the face. Number nine, undefeated Louisville, just slapped around by Syracuse. If they can do this to this West Virginia defense, then I think it's going to be a high-flying game, you know, kind of like our other um, big offensive games, our uh, Louisiana Lafayette ECU, our Arizona Nevada. Like, I would love to watch this game too. Um, So what's your prediction for the game? I'm going to predict um, a very, very high-scoring game. Like we've always said, pretty much anyone who knows anything about college football knows it's going to be a pretty high-scoring game based on the defenses and based on the offenses. I think West Virginia walks out with a win due to their high-powered offense led by Geno Smith, and I think the score is going to be 55-42. That's a good one. Um, for me, ah, I don't know. I love both these offenses so much. I love... Ryan Nassib, how he's really good, and he coordinates his offense really well. And I really, really love Tavon Austin. Just that speed is just ridiculous at times. But I think at the end of the day, it's going to be a high-scoring affair. I predict this game to go to overtime. It's going to go to overtime, and I think it's going to come down to like a triple overtime type thing where somebody's got to score two, and one defense is going to get that crucial stop. And I think Syracuse just has that little bit more of defense to be able to st- get a stop on, like, a two-point conversion. So I think Syracuse wins. Ah, I got to think of this because it's going to be touchdowns all day. I got to I think it's going to be Syracuse 57 to 55. Ooh, cl- nail biter. Nail biter in triple overtime. Wow. So, basically, West Virginia fails on the two-point. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Syracuse is going to have a little bit of defense to get that stop close. It's going to be great game in the snow. Even the even with the snow, I feel like these offense aren't going to get stopped. Nothing's going to slow these guys down at all. I hear you there. 
All right, that's going to be all for this episode, and be sure to join us next time for the Craft Fight Hunger Bowl between Navy and Arizona State, and be sure to drop us a like, comment, and subscribe. Tell us what you think is going to happen in the game. This is UFC Wildcat and Powder Blue Bolts, signing out.